take two. An almighty f up from the goal umpire has costed the Crows a finals berth and today ladies and gentlemen we get to the point of how it all unfolded starting with the Ben Keys kick which would just about seal their finals hopes. He puts his entire team on his shoulders, runs an arc and the kick looking online. I think he's got it. The celebration all in the f***ing head. But no, the goal umpire has one arm out, bangs the post with the other and Lloyd looking to bring it back in. Meanwhile, Keys and the lads are still celebrating a f***ing behind and the Crows fans in joy have no idea that the umpire called a behind and the ball now getting out of the Swans defensive 50 since half the Crows team are either still celebrating or are on the other side of the planet. Keys can only turn to the fans in shock. He could have sworn that was through. Oh shit. What the f***? And once the ball is kicked further afield, what the f*** is that shit? That's bullshit. The first replay we get is once the ball is over the boundary line for a throw in. And by G, looking at it from this angle, the only way it could have been touched is if it hit the back padding. After that, play continued, but the Crows couldn't get it back down to their forward line and the Swans win by a single point. Much to the booze from the crowd, we will have a look at a few replays to see what the f*** just happened. Before we discuss anything review or arc related, we've already covered how bad it is in our previous video and considering there was no review, we have to come at this from a different angle. We've got a couple of angles to work with, this live shot being the best considering it isn't two frames a month and the viewers at home can see a clear gap between post and ball. This is why most thought it had to have hit the padding at least, right? We can move on to the arc shots which weren't used as the umpire did not send this one upstairs for a review much to his better judgment. Instantly, we can see a few things from this shot. Firstly, the ball did not clip the padding at all and the umpire couldn't have been in a better position if he wanted to, right underneath the line of the ball. We can then see Mills's reaction which looked quite deflated as he must have thought it was a goal, though Lloyd quite the opposite putting his hand up straight away. We then cut to the celebration, finger pointing straight to the textured brain of Key's arms out, thought to be the goal of his career, fans are f***ing wild, this bloke with the poncho jumping up and down like a rock star and then it looks to be a line supporter in the blue jumper pointing straight back to the umpire screaming it was a behind which I thought was quite funny given the celebration. Right so we have the arcs vision which again wasn't needed and or used and we've got clarity that the edge which is the AFL's version of Snicko wouldn't have been used because Lloyd's hand also bumped into the post at the same time the ball would have meaning that they wouldn't be able to discern the two noises. What a joke. I've been through it before, but geez, can we have some money poured into this department because it really is a joke. So the ball is now next to the post. We've got daylight between the ball and post, and we can conclusively say that the ball did not hit the padding. This would have been how my arc score review would have gone down. Score review, umpire's call is touched, one behind. Review underway. Can we get the goalpost angle and our best live angle synchronized to determine if the ball makes contact with the post? Awaiting angles. Thank you, the ball is in line with the post and there is clear daylight between the ball and post. I am happy to assist the on-field umpire and rule this a goal. Decision on scoreboard. We need score reviews with the third umpires or our commentary to see how exactly shit goes down. I know it didn't go to score reviews so we can now discuss what should happen with the technology going forward. 1. Completely revamp the arc system to include 1080p 120fps cameras so that when footage is slowed down frame by frame it isn't choppy and unviewable. We could also see an inclusion of edge on the two main posts to cut costs and with the use of visuals on screen so we aren't relying on just the audio. There is also additional cameras to be placed in the goalposts for wider viewing for the decisions for the arc's ease of mind. It'd be great to remove the entire soft call decisions considering the amount of insufficient evidence from the arc which I find quite hilarious because what's the point of ARC if you can't find evidence? There's been talk since early this year about microchips in the actual Sharon's football, but we haven't heard anything about this since. There's a whole heap more they could possibly look at and I wouldn't mind hearing what you guys think down below. 2. Delete ARC from the earth and maintain on-field umpire calls. If they decide this option, then at least the money will be better off spent on ground upgrades for fans, AFLW implementation, parking, increase in player base, marketing, and more. I'm happy with either option as long as it is 100% best for the game going forward. And I know a lot of you would be scared with the on-field umpire's call being incorrect, and we can see the decisions at home of the umpire being incorrect. I'd have the cameras in the goalposts removed just for this reason. You would need to minimize the amount of ARC cameras used on field to stop the Rowney fans complaining if we do not use the system in the future because then we'd be stuck in a loop calling for this system to come back into the game. Think about it. We wouldn't be able to watch and play the game without the umpires anyway so what's the harm in going back to the olden days with no technology in our game moving forward similarly to how Coles and Woolies have f 
stocked us with the shitty paper bags that aren't even cheaper than the plastic ones. Hooli dooly. So the AFL have released a statement, of course, about the decision. The AFL has confirmed the goal umpire in last night's match between the Adelaide Crows and the Sydney Swans made an error in definitively calling a point and not referring the decision to the ARC for review. The goal umpire has 15 years of experience and was definitive in his call that the ball had touched the post. There were no communication issues between the ARC and the umpires and with the ball being kicked in and returned to play so quickly by Sydney, it didn't allow enough time for the ARC to review or field umpires to refer to a review. Upon review, the outcome was conclusive that the decision would have been overturned and should have been referred to the ARC at the time. The goal umpire involved in the incident is being provided support by the AFL and we ask for everyone to respect how challenging a time it would be for him presently. The result from last night's match stands and the AFL will not pursue any further avenues regarding changing the result. The AFL has been in contact with the Adelaide Crows and the Sydney Swans overnight and this morning regarding this matter and acknowledge the professionalism in which the Adelaide Crows have acknowledged the goal umpire's error last night. The goal umpire will not be available for selection for the rest of the AFL season. So the AFL have said that the umpire should have gone to review through the arc and therefore the arc would have overturned the on-field decision. This is pretty common knowledge in all hindsight which is always 2020 and it's extremely stiff for the crows. We also gather that the umpire has 15 years of experience and felt that the ball had hit the post. Fair enough, you can stand by what you believe, it doesn't make you a shit person, you're human, make mistakes, we all do. Well done to the crows for keeping professionalism during this time where something doesn't go your way when it clearly should have. The one weird thing from the statement is that the umpire is not available for selection for the rest of the AFL season. I wonder if the umpire chose to sit it out or if the AFL told him he wasn't allowed to umpire. Of course your mental would be fried but considering he's got 15 years of umpiring experience you wouldn't just shit on a well experienced umpire for one mistake, surely. A mistake that costed a team a finals berth is reasonable but even still we've seen a lot worse in our normal everyday lives, communities than an AFL sporting event which at the end of the day doesn't mean the world. The CEO McLaughlin has also spoken, the result stands, this was a mistake Mistake. They happen repeatedly through the games by players, officials, others. The challenging part about this is the moment of this and ultimately the mistake could have been reviewed and wasn't. That's a fair shout, considering fans aren't too aggressive toward players when they give away a high free kick or get tackled for holding the ball, most of the hate will always go towards the umpires. There are also lots of decisions goal umpires are making where there's an opportunity to review and they don't because their view is they're absolutely unambiguous in their calls. In the umpire's mind there was a clear noise and a clear deflection. On review of the video evidence that wasn't right. This is what I was saying in my second point about scrapping the system. If they did go this route, they'd need to remove visibility from both the players and fans or viewers at home because as soon as leaks get out about a wrong decision, all havoc will break loose. It was a goal umpiring decision that should have been reviewed and that was a mistake. I want to say conclusively that if the decision had have been reviewed, it would have been overturned and it would have been a goal. It's a human error that happens repeatedly through games across the course of the year. But this is an error that, given the context and the moment was of great consequence and I want to acknowledge there was a mistake and take accountability for the mistake on behalf of the league. It's great to see that the CEO of a well-pronounced company takes accountability for things that aren't directly in his control. McLaughlin said he preferred not to see every call reviewed in the final minutes of games because of the unnecessary disruption to play. All goals are customarily reviewed by the ARC system but not behinds, unless called for by the goal umpire. This is quite interesting considering there may be what, 20 to 30 goals kicked in a game. If the ARC are only looking at those, then surely they'd be useful for another job like looking at behinds in the game, which they could easily review. Do you automatically review every single decision in the last minutes of games? That slows it down. I've been to plenty of games where decisions that are completely correct are being reviewed over an abundance of caution. This is probably the best point he made on the day of his speech. If we really want to see the arc change, there will need to be money poured into it, right? Otherwise, the system will most likely continue to be slow while we wait for an arc decision on field, and the AFL is too much of a fast pace game for there to warrant any insane slowdowns on the field as I discussed in my previous video. I know it might only hinder the time by a couple of minutes at best but multiple reviews in a game could be cause for concern to not only injuries to players, annoyance to fans but also as a strategic advantage if correctly coached. Is it time for a review system like we see in sports such as cricket, tennis and baseball where clubs are allowed two reviews per game? How would this look? Would it be too slow? Who would be in charge of the decision to go upstairs? 
how long would the reviews take? So many questions for this one, but it would be so interesting to see in trial. Maybe the coaches in the box or on the interchange bench could call for a review if they see their players argue the point to an umpire or raise their hand calling they touched it or even ask for the review themselves. That way, if you run out of reviews, it becomes a club issue and not an umpire issue where fans can then release their anger towards their teams. Just imagine there's a ball kicked towards the goals and the player touches it over the line, but the umpire calls a goal. The player could then refer it to either the umpire or coaches calling for a review for it to then go to the arc for an overruling. Seems very simple on paper and if teams only had a couple of these then it isn't a major slowdown and unlucky if you run out. I have never seen a game where there has been three touched calls that should have been overturned so giving teams two reviews seems reasonable. Again it's all speculation from my behalf but hey it's worth a shot at this point isn't it? How many more times are we going to hear that we're sorry we made a mistake before something actually gets done about it? I understand it would be an awful look for them to overturn the result of the game but moving forward into the 2024 season there needs to be some thought into every single possible outcome for the umpires in goals. That said for the on-field ones too. Something needs to be done during the off season to ensure there are no hiccups and f*** ups in 2024. I doubt this will be the case, but we can only hope, can't we? I'll leave this here with you, my Chrome subscribers. Absolutely, the crows were robbed. Right in front of me. Right in front of me. Thank you to those that have submitted requests of what they'd like to see. Link to the survey down below. I'll try and see if I can squeeze one or two in during the bye week before the finals. Play on AFL. Things do better with fun and laughter.